back from her travels, which is so nice because Francis is working away from home again. I don't think he and Abigail are talking again. I mean, they've always had a strained relationship, but they're in a particularly rough patch at the moment. I've always said in any relationship, someone has to wear the trousers. Obviously, it was me with Ned, but the problem with Francis and Abigail is that neither of them seems to know which one it is. Mum has a new friend, I see. Oh, what, Edward? Spending a lot of time with him, I hear. Mm, is she? Twice this week already. Annie was hanging around there all last week as well. Oh, hardly. And you know what Mum's like. She likes companionship. I suspect Ted's getting on her wick again. Oh, and I'm seeing more of my granddaughter, Georgie. Now she's back from university for the holidays. She's popping round while Francis is away. Do uh, pick up shopping for me. Change the light bulbs, that sort of thing. Poo Patrol. <laughs> she's turning into a genuinely nice young woman. And is his back. Did I tell you, is it back from her travel? Oh, that's nice, Vicky. How is she? Ed's the same as usual, grumpy mostly. I've had to ask the dog walker to come round earlier tonight because Ted is coming round later. Oh, there's some meeting or other on at the chess club and, and it would be so much easier if, if Rusty had had her walk and be back home and got nicely settled before Ted arrives. You know, Sally, it was a really good idea of yours getting a dog walker. As you said, get somebody younger so she can go out more. Well, I just thought, you know, it would really be a good idea. It enjoys her longer walks in the park. I can't do it anymore. Well, I can hardly walk at all now with my hips, you know. Well, neither of us are getting any younger. Oh, I know, Vicky. <laughs> Those short walks round the block. With Rusty sitting in my shopping trolley, well, it wasn't fair on her, was it? What's he like, this Edward? Oh, I don't know, I go away for a few months. Oh, how, how was Thailand? Oh, it was okay. Still magical, of course, but quite a lot different from the 90s. I mean, it has lost some of its character, I guess, but it was still beautiful. What are you doing, Frankie? You're all over the place. <sighs> what do you mean? You, your head, it, it keeps moving. Are you on your phone? Sorry, busy. Appointments and deadlines? Well, stop for a minute. I can't concentrate with your head bobbing about and going in and out all of the time. I don't know what i do without Ted taking me out in his car. I think I'll ask the dog walker to do the garden food patrol. Save Georgie a job. I can't bend down like I used to, Sally. Oh, I know. Tell me about it. Did I tell you what happened at the chess club last week? Ted again, same old tricks. Oh, he is a difficult man. Nothing like my Ned, God rest him. And he's got worse since they nominated him chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean chairperson. <laughs> well, anyway. Ted had a big bust up with the company secretary, uh, that Edward, whom he dislikes. I, I think I've mentioned him before. Ted's always round with him. Well, this time it was about tea bags, if you believe it. Tea bags. They ended up. Uh, they ended up shouting at each other all over the kitchen prep table while Janice and I were trying to get the tea for the break time. I can't understand it. They both knew that there was a tournament going on. Look, I'm no fan of Ted, but with this Edward coming out of nowhere. Oh, where did you go? In Bangkok? I just wonder what he's up to. Chiang Mai? <laughs> Wa Hin Beach? I mean, what's he like? Moon, eh? That's in Vietnam. Oh, I know. I was just checking. Mm. Francis, aren't you worried? Why would I be? I'm all the way up here, aren't I? And I haven't even had a chance to meet him yet. What does Georgie say? Well, she said he seems OK. More chilled than Ted. So I guess that means he's calmer. 
In what way? Easy going, maybe. Mum says he's a real gentleman. A <laughs> gentleman, eh? <laughs> I wouldn't know what that means. What does he do for a living? Oh, Mum never mentioned it. He's old enough to be retired. Oh, he sounds cagey. You know, when you ask someone, what do you do for a living? What you're really saying is, hmm, are you worth talking to? Very funny. But I still can't help wondering what he's after. Oh, you're sounding a little paranoid, is he? Your ill-spent youth? Coming back to bite you, maybe. <laughs> ha, ha. <laughs> But you know what mother's like, especially after dad. A terrible judge of character, especially around men. You must admit that, Frankie. Ted was a dreadful rebound. Well, Ted pitched up years after dad. Oh, you know what I mean. Ted is awful, but does she really need another useless man around? Oh, Izzy, please. Do you notice how she always goes after Edwards? Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> No, you shouldn't worry about her so much, Izzy. Mum knows how to look after herself more than you give her credit for. We really shouldn't interfere. Well, of course we shouldn't. I wasn't suggesting we should. I know she's an adult, but still, it, it's not just about her, is it? I mean, what about Georgie? You have her inheritance to think of, don't you? So you must wonder what's going on. No, not really, Izzy. You should have at least fetted him. <laughs> what? I'm not her father, am I? You should have checked him out. We don't even know if he's retired. Has he got money? At least head solvent. <laughs> Mum's not sitting on a vast fortune, is he? So, even more reason to look after it then. If you ever manage to sort things out with Abigail, you're sorted. Nice house, good job, wife, daughter. I can't live in a bedsit for the rest of my life, you know. You do all right, Michael Palin. All I'm saying is, God forbid, when she does go, it would be nice if Georgie had an inheritance, wouldn't it? And it would kind of be like it was from her granddad as well. But if some gold digger slimes his way in and gets their claws into her... I don't think Edward's a gold digger. I'm just saying, lonely old widow sitting on some cash just needs some gigolo to swoop in. He's not swooping in. Besides, Mum said that they're just friends. <laughs> That's what she said about Ted. But don't forget, it was me who walked in on them snogging that time. Hmm. Hardly snoggy. It's just a peck. <laughs> That's what Mum might have said, but you didn't see them. No, I know Mum and Ted are, are very fond of each other, but I doubt they're... That they are shagging? Of course they're shagging. No, really. No, she's far too old for all that. Shagging. Oh, stop saying that, please, Izzy. She just likes companionship. Oh, don't be naive, Francis. She met Ted on Tinder, for Christ's sake. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. I saw her profile pictures. Oh. Anyway, oh. stop being so patronising. Old people do it, you know. Aren't you being a bit ageist? Oh, can we please change the subject, Izzy? Izzy? Ted has always got the tea and biscuit in for the break. And the tea has got to be Meadows tea. He's obsessed by it. Well, I won't drink anything else. Well, he's now delegated Janice to do the shopping because of his new executive extensive duties at the club. Well, Janice didn't get to the shops in time last week. So Edward brought in Northumbrian brand. You know, the stronger stuff, which I actually prefer. How did Ted take that? <laughs> he was fuming. Oh, and red in the face, you know how he goes. I could see the vein in his temple. I think Edward did it on purpose. And Ted said as much to him. And Edward came back with one of his chess quotes. Um, as Emmanuel Lasker once said, when you see good tea, look for a better blend. Well, Ted snapped and stormed out for the rest of the evening. He was in a foul mood for days afterwards. Oh, That's I Ted for you. 
I wouldn't mind, but, but I've been asking for stronger tea at the club for years, and now I am expected to side with the Meadows Brigade. Janice won't take sides, of course. She said she doesn't mind what tea she drinks. Edwin said she couldn't make a decision if she was down to two pawns and the king. <laughs> what a silly woman. Oh, it wouldn't be so bad, but I've had to keep a packet of that Meadows tea in the cupboard at home for years now, just for when Ted visits. I really can't stand that Meadows tea. It's awful stuff. Oh, Ted's just too, you know, stubborn, you know, set in his ways. But I've known him a long time and, and I've got used to having him around. And, and to be fair, he has been very helpful to me over the years, especially after Ned. But before you say anything, no, we are not like an old married couple. Ted and I are just good friends. He just gets on my nerves sometimes. They know each other, don't they? Ted and this Edward at the chess club. I heard they'd had a row. Uh, they are quite competitive, I heard. Oh, that doesn't surprise me with Ted. He's virtually a fascist. Well, he's not that bad. What about that time he threw my dinner in the bin when I was running behind? You were over an hour late. I was still coming, wasn't I? I'd rung him to say I was still coming. Why would he do that? Well, you know he hates people being late. It was uncalled for. Dad would never have done that. In all fairness, Mother wouldn't have let him. Ted's a bully. I don't know why she puts up with him. Oh, then, then maybe this Edward coming along is a good thing. Possibly. But we still don't know what he's really like, do we? I don't understand you sometimes, Izzy. No, I thought you'd be pleased if she found someone else other than Ted. You hate Ted. I don't hate Ted. Not really. I just don't trust this Edward turning up out of the blue. I know he's after something. And if it's not dad's money, then what? You know what they say? Chess players are always ready to mate. Ted, would you mind giving it a miss today, dear? Again? Oh, for goodness sake. Why, tell me now. I was all set to come round. I've already got my shoes on. It's Rusty. She's not at all well. Are you, Rusty? That dog keeps getting ill. You should take it to the vet. I know. I am sorry, dear. I will make it up to you. Keep doing this to me, lady. It's not really not right, you know. If you make an arrangement with someone, you really have got to keep to it. I know, dear, but it's hardly my fault if Rust is not well, is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Don't worry. I can put up with it. I don't know why you can't put her in another room when I come round. You know I'm allergic. Since when? Since she slept on my cashmere coat that time. You were a very naughty dog, weren't you, Rusty? But you know, Ted, I can't lock her up in another room. It's her home as much as mine. Oh. And then she yaps all the time. It annoys the neighbours. Being locked up upsets her and makes her cry. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You don't understand, Ted, because you don't like animals. But Rusty is a very sensitive soul. And she would think I didn't love her anymore if I were to lock her in another room, wouldn't you, Rusty? You spoil that bloody dog, you do. You act as if it's a human being or a baby or something. Well, she is a baby to me, aren't you, my sweetheart? And that mud eats better than I do. Well, you sound jealous, Ted. And you always enjoy my meals when you come round. You're round here for dinner most days. And as I said, I have the workmen coming round later. Uh, but what for? Oh, just some decorating. I could do that for you. What was it for? That front door? I was going to do that, wasn't I? You, you don't need to, Ted. I would prefer it if you didn't. Don't be absurd. It will save you money if I do it. I'll bring the overalls over. No, Ted. No, really. It's all being booked and, and, and Rusty will be overexcited enough as it is without you being there as well. She'll be jumping up and yapping and you know how you hate all that. And, and as I said, she's not well. She's a bit 
many at the moment. I'll come round this evening instead, then, to check on the work. Maybe take you out for dinner afterwards. We could try that new Moroccan place or go back to that French restaurant you liked. You know, the one with the cold soup. Oh, that, that's very, very sweet, Ted. Very nice. But maybe tomorrow, not tonight. I don't know how long the workmen will be. Hello, Francis. Sorry to bother you, son. Um, that's quite all right, Ted. Though not a good time at the moment, to be honest. You know, I'm still working. At this time of night? They are working you hard, son. How is work, by the way? Um, you know, busy, as you can see. But I think I'm getting there. Oh, I hope to be home in a few weeks. Well, if we hit the deadline. See, that's why I'm pulling in the hours. Well, the sooner you're back with your family, son. What can I do for you, Ted? I want to talk to you about your mother. Victoria's not acting right. She seems a little preoccupied and she's been cancelling my visits. I just wanted to check if she was all right. Well, I think so. Not heard anything bad, Ted. But I'm not really the person to ask. You know, I've not been around. Have you spoken to Izzy? No. Should I have? Well, I mean, she's down there with you, isn't she? She would have a better idea. You know how much your mother means to me, and I don't understand what this change is all about. It worries me, and she's making it difficult for me to do those little jobs for her. You know I like to make sure she has everything she needs. Yeah. I know, Ted, and, and I'm sure that she appreciates everything that you do for her. She's a very special woman, is your mother. It's my job to look after her. As they say at the club, you've always got to protect your queen. <laughs> very good, Ted. But, you know, like I said, I'm sure everything's fine. Just keep an eye on her for me, won't you? Yeah, I will try. But I'm up here, you know, like I said. Well, do your best, son. Uh, yeah. you know, I'll speak to Izzy about it. If you think it will help. Look, don't worry about it, son. I'll keep an eye on her for you. The good news is, though, I did manage to repay that front door for a, a lovely navy blue. It brightens it up no end. That green was far too dark. <laughs> well, that was very kind of you, Ted. Thank you. Think nothing of it. She's, I think she's happy with it, much better than that old green. I thought Edward was painting it. Edward? Ah, uh, um, the workman. Oh, him, I've heard about him. Useless sod. He hadn't done it yet. Uh, yet, 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 had he? I don't know where she got him from. Bloody cowboy. I've always told her to check all references and review, or better still, get me to do it. I thought I would do it for her anyway. He hadn't done it yet when he promised to, and I can't understand, I can't cope with unreliable tradesmen. If you let them get away with anything, they walk all over you. I thought I would oh, stay hanging on for him. Well, well, like I said, Ted, it was extremely kind of you. Edward, you said. Edward. Not Edward at the club. I believe so. Oh, that crafty old sob, the lazy beggar. I wonder why he's stepping round your mother all of a sudden. Ah, but don't worry about it, Francis. I will look out for her. And as Charles Buxton once said, in life, as in chess, forethought wins. impressed with that blue door cell. I much preferred the green in the end. My husband chose that colour, Chelsea green. 
but it was looking a bit shabby. You met my Ned, didn't you, Sally, when he was alive? Was a lovely man, Vicky. I really regret letting Ted paint that door now. But that nice Edward has kindly volunteered to come round later and repaint it for me. Oh, I see. This is accused me of having an affair with him, by the way. <laughs> she virtually accused me of being unfaithful to Ted. Well, she doesn't even like Ted. So I don't know why she's getting her liquors in such a twist about it. But anyway, it's all so stupid. Everybody knows that Ted and I are simply good friends. Oh, if you say so, Vicky. I said to her, I said, Edward and I are just good friends. Friends with benefits, but friends just the same. She nearly choked on her tea. I had to explain to her, I didn't mean anything like that. And that the benefits I was talking about were things like company and going for meals occasionally and, and a little DIY around the house. Oh, and that despite oh, all this liberation we're meant to have, us single ladies still need a man to do all these little jobs around the house. She said she didn't need a man for anything. And that she could put up a shelf as well as anybody, especially a man. Well, I never put a shelf up in my life. I didn't know where to start. I said to her, I said, we're not all as independent as you, and that I've always needed a man to sort me out occasionally. She choked on her tea again. I'm not saying that I would never, ever meet another man again, romantically, I mean, but really at my age. No, I'm past all that sort of thing. Teddy's just a oh, silly old blast. man who keeps me company. No, I, I, I don't do that sort of thing anymore. I mean, not since Ned. And well, even then, Ned wasn't always keen. And if I could have had my children without all those shenanigans, well, I, I wouldn't have been really disappointed either. Mind you, if I met the right man, unlikely as that sounds, no, it, it's really a bit sordid, really, isn't it? Oh, I must dash. The dog walker's due. And Edward's coming round later to touch up my skirtings. Hi there, Georgie. How's your mother? She's all right, Dad. How are you? You both got everything you need. Yes, Dad, stop fussing. Money? Yes, Dad. Oh, I can't always do more of that. <laughs> no, but seriously, you both okay? Yes, Dad. I will be home again soon, love. I promise. It's just, well, the work needs me here at the moment. I know, and... Mum did say. I will be home soon. I know, Mum said that as well. Oh, did she? Of course. She misses you as well. How's university going? <laughs> you keeping up with your studies? Oh, Dad, it's fine. Honestly, it's all good. And your nan? She's fine as well. I went round to see her yesterday, like you asked. And did she need anything? Not really. Ted's pretty much got everything covered. I picked up some bits from the shop for her, but I think that was more about her not wanting me to waste my journey. And I took Rusty out. Oh, that was good of you. I love taking Rusty out. I've missed her. But apparently she's got some dog walker now. Oh, now that's a good idea. I've not met her yet. Probably some schoolgirl after extra pocket money. <laughs> well, people do that for a living nowadays. Well, that's just a reminder to keep up with your studies. Oh, Dad, I'm keeping up, honestly. I'm working really hard, actually. I'm even being marked on my work now. I'm in the second year. Well, that is good to hear. But I'm glad you're home for now. You know, I'm relying on you to keep an eye on things up there while I'm down here. So, well, she mentions me, does she? Your mother? Yeah, sometimes. What does she say? 
um, just stuff. Something about the back fence starting to come down again. <laughs> oh, it's nice to be missed. <laughs> Don't worry, Dad, I miss you. Oh, do you? Yeah. Mum makes me take the bins out now. No, <laughs> cheeky mare. No, seriously, I really appreciate you keeping an eye on things, but especially with this Ted and Edward thing going on. You mean Tedward? Tedward? Oh, you've been speaking to your Aunt Izzy. <laughs> it's just so funny, Dad. These two old men are fighting over Nan. I wish I were home. Oh no, Dad, you don't believe me. You wouldn't believe it. Edward's only gone and painted Nan's front door bright red. Red? You know Nan can't say no to a DIY. I thought Ted painted it blue. He had, but she said she didn't really like it. She well, said she preferred it when it was green. Well, why the bright red? Oh, hold on, Dad, I'm getting there. Oh, OK. <laughs> I asked her why she let Ted paint the door blue. Yeah, and what did she say? <laughs> she said she didn't want to make a fuss. Oh, that's typical. But why the bright red? <laughs> she said Edward offered to fix it for her. But when he turned up, he only had red paint with him. And, <laughs> and she didn't want to make a fuss. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your grandmother's a nightmare sometimes, and Ted's going to go absolutely ballistic when he finds out. You would have thought so. Oh, well, he knows, does he? He popped in while I was there. Oh. But he wasn't angry this time. He just sighed and said something about no one wins a chess game by resigning. Ah, uh, Savielli. Tartakawa. <laughs> what? He's used that one before. Hi, Candice. How's the Amazon? Oh, do you have a drink ready, sister? Because all hell is about to break loose. Go on. <laughs> well, you know how Ted and Edward know each other. Oh, girlfriends, it turns out they already really, really hated each other. I mean, all along. I mean, we've both been round the block. <laughs> you know what I mean. We've both travelled, you know, after we met in Thailand. I told you I went back, right? Oh, of course I did. But it doesn't matter. But can you tell me, what the hell is going on with old folk nowadays? I don't know what's gotten into her. I mean, remember the big drama she had when we were both in Bangkok? And I can tell you, it was not the same this time round, Candy. You would have cried if you'd seen what they'd done to the Navali Royale. Oh, no. I know. How can you possibly gentrify Bangkok? People say it hasn't changed that much, but it really has. <laughs> Anyways, back to my wayward mother. The whole situation has escalated and Tedwood are now actually fighting over her i mean literally well no not literally not fisticuffs but it is kind of like a jewel but by diy choose your weapon i choose a paintbrush and a tin of gloss ted repainted my mother's door blue again it was green at first then ted painted it blue but mum didn't like it so we painted it red and mum liked it even less so ted painted it blue again or something i lose track it really is a shame, though, as Dad painted it green in the first place. One of the last things I remember he did in the house before he got ill. And I know it's stupid, but every time they paint that bloody thing, I feel like I'm further and further away from him, uh, from my dad. And I don't really know what Mum's playing at. She even popped round to see me with him yesterday. Edward, that is. Funny looking man. Nothing like Dad or Ted, for that matter not really her type and if it wasn't all so stupid it would be funny I'm quite cross with her actually she's acting like a spoiled teenager setting up two men against each other I mean at her age like she's in some rude and slow melodrama and I really don't like Ted as you know but they've been going out for years and to be fair to him he was what she needed at the time after dad you know and I know Ted can be hard work but I don't think it's fair that she's sleeping with another man. 
I'm even beginning to feel sorry for him. And I know she's always said they're only friends, but someone really ought to have told Ted. Thank you for taking my call, Francis. This is still called a call, isn't it? Oh, um, video chat, maybe. I don't know. Listen, we will have to be quick. I've got an arroz corno in the oven. Oh, that sounds very nice. Expecting a guest, are you? Abigail. Abigail. That, she sounds like a really nice young lady. She's my wife. Oh, never mind. Can't be helped. I'm sure it will be lovely for you anyway. <sighs> well, she's coming down to see me. Um, you know, if, if you don't mind, she'll be here soon. Try to work things out with your wife, are you? It's good to talk. Good to try and sort things out, isn't it? What do you mean? Oh, right. <laughs> right. Mother. Yes, your mother said you were having a spot of trouble with your relationship. You really shouldn't have said anything at all. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, Edward. No, but is this just a, a social call or is there something I can help you with? Well, it would be hardly a social call now, would it? Your mother hasn't formally introduced us yet. But that can't be helped. I must say it is very, very nice to meet you at last, Francis. Well, likewise, Edward. But like I said, is this something that we could do tomorrow? Oh, no, of course, of course. I can see you're a very busy man and I expect it can wait. I understand. It's just that I'm only calling you because I'm rather worried about your mother, you see. Oh, right, are you? Why, yes, of course, aren't you? I'm not sure what you mean. No, how can I put this? Do you not find Ted in some ways a little bit controlling? Oh, he's old school, I know. And controlling behaviour can sometimes be the thin end of the wedge, can't it? Oh, he's not as bad as that. Well, I'm, I'm only calling you because I'm rather worried about your mother. Don't you find Ted in some ways a bit of a bully? No, he's forthright. <laughs> Opinionated, even. The way he bosses her about. Uh, I don't think he's as awful as everyone says. You know, I mean, he likes his own way, but, but my mother is, 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 is more than capable of standing up for herself. Really? Yes, of course. That is not what she tells me. She says she finds Ted overwhelming at times. Your mother really deserves much better, you know. <sighs> Look here, Edward, Ted's been around forever. I mean, they are really good friends, and, and anyway, anyway, I'm not sure what any of this has to do with me. Well, I understand Ted's been part of your life for many a year, hasn't he? Perhaps, he even, perhaps you even regard him as a bit of a father figure, would you say? Well, hardly. Look here, Edward. <laughs> with all due respect, now why are you telling me this? Well, I want you to understand the situation. I want you to know there's some changes in the wing. And I suppose I'm also seeking your blessing. What? Oh, oh, oh. I've come oh. to feel a great deal of affection towards your mother, you know? And I can assure you it's reciprocated. She finds Ted suffocating and she's had enough. Now I can treat her with respect. I can look after her, I can give her everything she needs or wants. And as for that Ted, he's only gone and painted the front door blue again. Very much against her wishes, I might add. You know there has been some colour variations. She really didn't want it changed. But he always insists on getting his own way. He doesn't listen to what other people think and he doesn't care. But don't you worry, son. He's not going to get away with it this time because I'm going to paint it back to the colour that she wants. Oh, well, well, OK. Thanks for that. But don't you think all of this is, you know, getting a little out of hand? Oh, I do. That's exactly what I think. That's why I've stepped in, you see. <laughs> no, no, that's not quite what I... Um... 
Yeah, I want to reassure you. I'm only interested in your mother, Francis, and what she wants. I can see they might be coming across a little antagonistic towards Ted. I can appreciate that, but you don't know the half for what he's like. And I am a very passionate person, especially when it comes to your mother. This verve, this rapture I feel within me, is really rather unusual for me, you know. Your mother has raised a strong thirst within me. Oh, um, well, I mean, it was, it was really nice talking. It makes Edward. me want to protect her and give in to her every desire. I can assure you I will do everything and anything in my power to protect her. And as for that Ted, as Gary Kasparov once said, I only attack because I know it works best. I'm really fed up with Edward and Ted now. I never wanted that door painted in the first place. I much preferred it green. I just wanted it tidied up. My husband chose that colour. He painted it green. And I was just so upset when it, it, it got to look so shabby after all these years. I actually wanted a kitchen done, if I'm honest. Oh, did you? And I really don't like the red that Edward has painted the door. It makes my home look like a bordello. I mean, my neighbours think I'm the new Cynthia Payne. Especially that curtain twitcher at number 46. Oh, such a nosy Parker. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure about Edward anymore. There's something funny about him. Well, he's no Ted. And neither of them are anything like my Ned. God rest his soul. I hear you spoke to my brother, Edward. Hello, is he? Isabel will do just fine. When we met before, you said? That was before all the infantile behaviour with my mum's front door. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm only doing what your mother asked. I really don't care what you have to say, Edward. I just want you to tell me what you're up to. Or can you just leave us all alone? But you called me. Videoed me, whatever you call it these days. Don't you think you're being a little contradictory? I have not even started yet, Edward. I don't know who you are, where you came from, or what you want. All I know is that my mother is too trusting. And to be frank, looking at you, I don't trust you. I can't help what you think. I think I will continue to take my advice from your mother. I can only assume that you're some kind of geriatric gold digger. Gold digger? Don't you be ridiculous. I'm not even that old. I want you to leave my mother alone, Edward. It wasn't perfect with Ted, but things were better before you turned up. Have you considered what your mother wants? Doesn't she get a say in this? She doesn't always know what she wants. And there you have it. And I think it quite rich, you twisting things up like that, after trying to take advantage of an elderly widow. She's not that old either. Older than you, though, isn't she? Well, perhaps just a few years, but I don't see what... I don't really care, Edward. And as far as I'm concerned, you are what is known nowadays as a toxic partner. And I want you as far away from my mother as humanly possible. Leave her alone. Toxic? I don't even know what that means. Oh, look in a mirror. I'm sorry to have to break this news to you, Izzy. Isabel, I mean. But your mother wants me around, you see. She asks me around all the time. Ted's the one you should be having this conversation with. He's the one who's what, what she'll turn toxic. Or even better, why don't you go and talk to your mother about it? So Ted's the problem, is he? Not according to my mother. It's you she finds poisonous. Oppressive, even. Well, that's not what she told me. Then maybe both of you are assholes. Neither of you are a patch on my father. I'm truly sorry about your father. Neither of us is him. But your mother's moved on. Maybe you should too. What? Yeah. 
But your mother did say you were highly strung at times. What? She said you had some emotional problems in your past. That's exactly why she needs me to look after her while your, while your brother's away. So I can take care of her, so I can take the pressure off. Worry about you all the time. Unmarried at your age and living in a bed sit. I like travelling. Besides, she likes having me around. I've been very helpful doing things around the house and all. Ah, well, that's where you're wrong. That's Ted's job. He's already been round and painted the door blue again. Has he? Yes. I'm to see what your mother means now. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Interfering. Isn't that why you went off travelling again after you had that row with her? You wanted Ted to back off, didn't you? And she didn't appreciate it and you both fell out. You don't know anything about that. Isn't that why you always go travelling? You don't stick around to sort out all the chaos you create. Did my mother tell you that? You need to take a step back from the board, my dear. See things in clearer perspective. Your brother agrees with me. About your mother and me, you see? Francis. Yes, Francis, my dear. He supports us. I wonder why you find it so difficult. He's always been soft when it comes to our mother. It's because he's her favourite. I bet they told you I'm a big mess up. And maybe I am. Maybe I am disorganised, unfocused. But I can see right through you, Edward. I can see what you're doing, manipulating my mother and now my brother. And God knows who's next. Georgie. And I won't stand for it. I won't let you control everyone. You're wrong, Izzy. Now listen to me, girl. I don't manipulate people. I don't have to. I like to win, but I don't have to be devious or angry or cruel about it. It's like Bobby Fisher once said, I just believe in making the right moves. Hello, Izzy. <laughs> Oh, I can't see you. We need to turn your camera on. It's okay, Frankie. It's off on purpose. Well, why is that? You okay? Not presentable. Makeup's run. Been crying. Been laughing. I'm a bit angry now, actually. Oh, really? What's happened now? Bloody Ted would. What else? Oh, I should have guessed. Well, what happened? Turn your camera on. I can't. Not yet. In a minute. So, tell me what happened. Mum was saying about how fed up she was with Edward, with, with all the door painting back and forth. And? Izzy came round earlier, bless her. She brought a tin of green paint with her, said she was going to fix up her dad's door. I thought that was sweet of her. She does think of me. Sometimes. So I, I'd had enough of it all and went round to fix Dad's door to get rid of that bloody navy blue paint Ted so fond of. And I was only halfway through when Edward turned up with a pot of red. Oh, goodness. And I know last time we spoke, I, I wasn't very kind to him. I did hear. From Mum? Yeah. Hi, Dad. I was round Nan's and did you hear what happened? You did. <laughs> Aunt Izzy was there with Edward, and both were trying to frame the front door different colours at the same time. What a mess. Goodness gracious, Sal. Izzy was standing on the kitchen chair, painting the door green from the top down, when Edward turned up, also with paint. I'd forgotten he was coming. Anyway, and without a word, mind you, he opened his pot, and started painting the door from the bottom up. In red, of course. Izzy was flinging her paintbrush wildly about, shouting and swearing down at him, as only she can, 
telling him that she was painting the door for her dad and he should just go away. Well, she didn't say go away, of course, but I don't use that sort of language myself. Edward just kept his head down while he was being splattered with paint, painting the door from the bottom as though he was possessed or something. I was already started on the door when Edward, well, he just started painting it from the bottom up and I kept telling him to pee off. Well, not pee exactly. I may have lost it a little bit, to be honest, and accidentally on purpose dripped paint on him. And no, before you ask, I had not been drinking. I really did not know what to do. I kept telling them to stop, but they wouldn't listen to me as usual. So I went inside to make a pot of tea. I only had meadows in, unfortunately. Oh, and then Dad, after Nan went back into the garden to go back inside, only Ted went and arrived. Oh my God, is he? So what happened then? Well, I didn't see him arrive at first and Edward had started flicking paint back up at me by then, the immature sod. Anyway, the first thing I knew, Ted was there when Edward and I were absolutely covered in blue paint. He only went and threw a can of paint over them both. You sure you're OK? Turn your camera on. Well, I'm OK now, of course. But at the time, I was in a complete state of shock, standing there, the back of my legs covered in blue paint, green all over my hands and sleeves. I've always been a messy painter. And then also splotches of red up my front from Edward flicking it up at me. Edward got it worse. I'm not sure, but I think Ted was aiming mainly at him because he ended up covered in blue paint from head to foot, all over, in his hair, everywhere. And then Edward stood up, slow like, and what was the name of that film, Dad? The one with the girl, the one where she's all covered in blood. Carrie. It was like a scene from that film, Carrie, only in blue. I came out carrying my tray of tea and the whole scene had descended into a horror show. I quite like that film, actually. It's one of my favourites. Ted had arrived and was holding an empty pot of blue paint dripping all over my footpath. Izzy was still on the chair and Edward... He was just standing there looking very angry. Well, I think he was angry. It was hard to tell under all that blue paint. Anyway, it doesn't matter what film it was because Edward, he just lost it, Dad. He went well ballistic and stormed towards Ted and went and only chipped the rest of the red paint all over his head. And then they started shouting at each other, calling each other names, scooping handfuls of paint out of their tins and flinging it at each other. And frankly, it was nothing to do with mum at all. None of it was. It was all about some chess tournament or something way back when. And Ted was accusing Edward of cheating or something. And I was so furious at them both, especially after all this trouble. And I was really upset about Dad's door, Frankie. It was ruined, all covered in red and blue and green paint. I was so angry. Dad, you wouldn't believe it, but Aunt Easy, she just jumped down from her chair and went and poured all her paint all over them both. And I I just couldn't help myself. I I just pitched in. Ah, Easy. Please, are you sure you're okay? Turn your camera on right now. All right. <laughs> you can't. You're covered in paint. <laughs> your, your hair, your face. Oh, for God's sake. Well, what happened then? <laughs> well, we had a pain fight. <laughs> all three of them, Sal, including Izzy, were throwing paint all over each other in great messy handfuls throwing it like a a big glossy rainbow. Well, the garden was a complete mess. Out out of the three of them, Dad, I would have to say Ted was the one with the most skill at paint throwing. He must have done it before. He was just too accurate. (laughs) Oh, it was a nightmare, Frankie. There was paint flying everywhere. I couldn't stop myself. And then I caught a glint in Ted's eye, and I'm not sure what it was, but in that moment, (laughs) we both knew the whole 
thing was bloody ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbours were all out by then. That nosy curtain twitcher from number 46 as well. Oh, she won't tire of gossiping about this one for a very long time, I can tell you. It was crazy, Dad. Aunt Izzy and Ted, they just burst out laughing and for no reason. And then they turned on Edward and pelted him, pelted him bad, Dad, and laughing all the time. They were laughing like mania. You know, Sal, it's a rare sight to see either of those two laugh. And when they turned on Edward, well, I couldn't help laughing myself. He was still so angry and shouting and, and he looked so shocked. And when he turned to me for help, well, I had to put the tray down. I was laughing so much. And then he just ran off down the road with Ted shouting after him something like, um, even the laziest king flees wildly in the face of a double check. Aaron Sinomovich. <laughs> I had to look it up. Oh, and then the dog walker arrived. Thank you, everyone, for attending this meeting. A meeting? I thought this was a group chat. It's an intervention, Dad. What's all this about, Izzy? You, Nan, silly. Me, dear. Can we get on with this, please? Oh, is Ted coming? Oh, no. No, he's still not talking to me. Hooray. Really? What an arse. Oh, he's not that bad, is he? Think of Mum. Eh? Well, that's a real shame, Mum. Good riddance, I say. Me too. Mum. Mum. Well, he was getting annoying. So, what's all this about? <laughs> you, Nan. It's about what happened, Mum, with the door. But I thought that was all done with now. Well, that's not the point. Oh, thank you for painting my door green again for me, you two. That's all right, Nan. Expensive, though. I had to buy more paint. <laughs> that's because you painted Edward with it, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> I am sorry about that. Do you need any money, dear? Oh, don't worry about that, Mum. That's not the point. Oh, I'd say. Especially with this new, what, dapper and dashing dog walker suddenly coming onto the scene. <laughs> exactly. Who the hell was he, Mum? <laughs> oh, Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian, is it? He's a bit old, isn't he? <laughs> Sebastian? I don't think so. Well, he's hardly any younger than me. Ancient? No, too old to be a dog walker. Isn't that a bit ageist, aren't you? Nonsense, dear. <laughs> Anybody can be a dog walker if they want to be nowadays. Well, maybe. Not too old to be a toy boy, Mum. <laughs> oh, Dad, oh. please. I think he's waiting to come in. What? He's joining yes. us? He's in the waiting room. Let him in, is he? You invited him? Well, I thought it would be nice for you all to meet him. Why, hello. 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 This is my daughter, Izzy. Ah, oh, enchanté. Hello. Ah, oh, you never said your daughter was such a captivating angel. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you, my shawty. Oh, my. My son, Francis. Ah, oh, pleased to meet you. Likewise. Oh, not again. And my granddaughter, Georgette. Oh, how you doing, my dear? How's school? It's university. Ah, so you're in big school now. <laughs> this is just too funny. And this is Sebastian, everyone. My boyfriend. Mad! <laughs> Glad you're back home with Abigail again, Frankie. I bet Georgie's pleased. Yeah, she's back at uni now anyway. Yeah, of course, but still. Well, how's you? How's Vietnam? Amazing. It's the new Thailand. Candy's loving it as well. Oh, it's nice that you two have gone travelling again together, you know, after so long. It's like we're back in our gap year again. How's Mum? She seems okay. 
She's left the chess club. I heard. I know, it was inevitable, really, you know, after what happened. Is Ted still not talking to her? <laughs> <laughs> no, not after Sebastian. And how is he? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it didn't last very long. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I know, Mum said he was getting irritating, so she dumped him by text. Ash! I know, I even felt sorry for him for a second or two. So what's she doing now? She's joined a bridge club. Oh, well, that sounds much better. Who does she partner with? Sally, I suppose. No, not really. It's a, a Drake or something or other. Drake? Yeah, something like that. I see. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing, but... <laughs> what? Well, you don't think she's... Oh! <laughs> <laughs>